we come to the last speaker, Sim Sitkot, who's the Government Chief Information Office for Estonia. Um, we've heard a lot about Estonia, Sim, and um, you have been pretty fundamental in the development of both the strategies and policies in relation to the development of the Estonian view on the digital area. And I think, am I right, you're one of the main founders for the e-residency uh, initiative. Um, but not only that, he's, uh, I think it's really something very interesting. In, a, in, in another time, he also worked for the Development Fund and the Ministry of Finance. And I think uh, working for the Ministry of Finance is always an insight into <laughs> how things work in the economy. So, Sim, we look forward to your presentation on bringing the DSM to life. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, it's actually easy for me to be in Ireland and go to meetings. So, we're here actually with a business delegation this time as well that uh, is having parallel meetings right now. But at whatever meetings I go to and when I have to say who I am, I just say, I'm the Barry Lowry of Estonia. <laughs> there you are, so, Barry. Uh, it's an easy, easy reference. <laughs> No, but it's good to be here and, and really speak a bit about, yes, uh, all the things that we are up to as a presidency now and actually picking up from what the, all the speakers have said before. But in order to do that, let me just ask a very quick question by show of hands. So who has actually been to Estonia from here? All right, well, that's more than I was expecting, but good. For all the rest of you, don't worry. I'll give you a glimpse. I'll give you a glimpse uh, in the next few slides about what it's about, what all... Uh, what all things digital we are up to and you know, why do we keep insisting on this topic a lot. And um, I'll start really by saying that, well, perhaps we don't know better. Uh, mm -hmm. So the background really is why we started doing anything and everything we could digitally, you know, 20 years ago and why it became a strategy really for the country was that clearly we are, you know, even smaller than Ireland. And uh, exactly facing great sort of, you know, development challenges in terms of economic growth and so forth. Well, the context is that, well, we have to do everything we can to be as efficient as we can, right? With the little population or resources we, we have. The context also has been that it has been, uh, well, I can't say we're really Irish in that sense, but it's actually really also in low taxes, uh, a bit like here. So in that context, how do you pull off the challenge of still being a full-fledged country and the public sector, right? So clearly efficiency is, is the part. And that's why we started experimenting based on some really good advice and ideas from uh, you know, visionary engineers uh, 20 years back. And mind you, it worked. So from the first experiments and sort of trials of technology and how to be efficient with that, it became a conscious strategy that it is now. And um, let's say if we jump forward 20 years, so where we stand today, I mean, I could uh, safely say that almost anything uh, you need to get done with the government, but also actually beyond, you can get, get done electronically online yourself. Mm. The only exceptions there are are basically interactions we call high-risk ones, like getting married. <laughs> so, uh, to take the romance away from this, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, an interac it's a transaction that comes you know, with serious consequence, hopefully for the rest of your life. So we want to, know you, we want to make sure you know what you're doing and you know, exactly going into this voluntarily. Or um, buying and selling real estate, same thing. We, don't want, to make sure, we want to make sure that you're not being coerced out of your most valuable asset. So you still have to show up even though the rest of it happens afterwards, everything digitally. So you don't, for example, get the marriage certificate on paper anymore that has any legal value. It's just an entry in the registry. Again, sorry for the Romans. Yeah. <laughs> now, the point here is that, so yes, anything and everything beyond that, and I'll share a few more examples, uh, has been enabled digitally, really for the reasons, yes, because that way we can deliver better as a, as a public sector and government, but also, of course, bringing efficiency and convenience to people's lives and entrepreneurs' lives. Now, before I bring out examples, I'll say just you know, a few words about what have been really the enablers and what are, that have allowed us to pull this off. And clearly, digital identity has been one of them. So, and not just for authentication in terms of logging in and sort of being able to securely access whatever services and systems online, but even fundamentally, the electronic signatures, it allows us to uh, issue, again, in a secure and fully mm. legally valid manner. So with our ID card or a mobile ID, I can sign off anything and it will hold in court. So whether it's my application to my government, my prime minister sending a bill to the parliament, or two companies making contracts between themselves, we don't have to meet. We can be anywhere in the world and get that stuff done. Um, our prime minister has famously you know, signed bills to send to parliament at the back of the car, back seat of the car, because that's the most efficient time use for them. Mm. So um, 
identity, clearly one of them. Secondly, Xroad was already mentioned, but basically having a platform and the common way of doing things rather for data exchange has been instrumental as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about from service point of view, quite often we need to either push or pull data, especially if we want to serve the people in a seamless way. So to give you just one example then, um, tax declarations have been for long a very easy affair in Estonia. So for physical people, if it's tax declaration time, uh, they spend about three minutes on this at most. They go in when it's tax date, they review the data because we bring it together over x road and it's a pre-filled declaration. Mm. Next, 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 submit, done, that's taxes. Sounds good. No paper slips, no accountants, no sort of, you know, uh, hassle essentially. And the same thing is exactly is replicated in other sort of services then. And that's why data sharing is really sort of what powers the sort of good sort of service uh, uh, experience. That's why I have to make an internet now. We are very keen to sort of see and cheer for Valerie and the government here mm -hmm. exactly on the identity part as well as the ideas for the data exchange and sharing. If these building blocks are there, then we know a great digital government can actually be built and, and in all different areas. Now, but I promise to give you a bit, bit of glimpses. So if I look at, let's say, the services that we have built up from government point of view, I would say they fall into like three sort of categories. But one of them is that we try to really digitize and make efficient and convenient all the things that we make people and companies do. So all the bureaucracy. So for example, if you are a company and you're up and running, all the reporting you have to do, you do it online. Actually, it's even for companies, it's mandatory to do it online. Mm -hmm. Well, for tax purposes, statistics or, or annual reporting, you name this. Because that's more efficient. That's exactly the mm -hmm. way, you know, the, that's why they go for this as well. Because that saves them time and money. Mm -hmm. With bureaucracy, um, in our case, we've even gone beyond. It's not just efficiency anymore. Our, I'm glad to say our digital services for companies have gotten so good that we attract now users for them for all over, from all over the world. That's the e-residency that was kindly mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. With e-residency, we started issuing our digital identity uh, card for uh, anyone in the world about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. So that was really the idea that, look, I mean, let's open up our services. So far, only a physical Estonian resident could get access to them. But why not serve all those that who want to transact across the borders? To be, for them to be able to mm -hmm. sign digitally, do the financial transactions, uh, to um, set up companies and run them, that's a great benefit. We now are seeing people being, or from all the world being attracted to this and they bring sort of, you know, again, more, more revenue now to the, to the country because they use the services through us even if they're there in, you know, somewhere in Dublin here or on the beach in Fiji. So that was bureaucracy. Second thing is that we try to also bring the digital means of convenience to the things that people want to do, even all the way to voting, which is the, the sort of scenario here. Well, the voting is really this way that, look, these days we're all busy, right? And we are also more and more driver globally. So voting and actually going to an election booth is, is quite a lot of hassle these days for many people. Not to mention that it can be crappy weather exactly like that. <laughs> um, in our case, we are not so lucky to have elections, for example, in September. Our parliamentary elections are the first Sunday of March. Um, it can be pretty bad. So, but that was the idea. Let's then offer a much more comfy and easy access to, uh, to voting for people. You can just vote over internet now in Estonia um, for your parliament or local municipality or European parliament from your home, from your office, again, the beach in Fiji. So uh, that's, we can just make it more convenient and accessible. Mm. But of course, serving the people is especially necessary at the times you know, when they have the gravest need for this. So for example, you know, again, in the cases where they really need government or let's say uh, public services to come to health. Mm. Health is a prime example. Uh, that's why we have opted for a national health record for 10 years now. We've built up a medical <coughs> history mm. electronically so that the next time you have to see a doctor, perhaps we don't have to redo as many analyses, especially mm. in emergencies. That can you know, save your life right there, that the data is available. In all of these things, and I could speak way long, I know the time is limited, but um, we try to really follow a few sort of approaches or principles that for us really now have become even instincts, I would say. And one of them is really that whatever we do, we have to make sure that trust is there so that we build systems securely, we keep them secure day by day by having a very high level of defense cap capacity for, for any sort of cyber incidents, but also that we preserve the privacy, of course. And so it's uh, all the way to exactly how we design things, like I said. So, for example, how we preserve the, the privacy in the case of health. Well, we are transparent about how we use the data. 
that's a good way that you know if all mm -hmm. the other sort of uh, sort of uh, checkpoints fail, people themselves can see yes. who has access to data. And if there's an issue that the wrong doctor you know went into somebody's file, well, then we can sort of do something about it. So. Mm -hmm. With many different examples, but yes, we clearly need to ensure trust because without trust, we won't have the users. And without users, we can't really have the benefits from digital that we need to have. But secondly, and I think I already hinted on this, talking about X-Road, uh, we clearly have benefited. We fundamentally believe that data sharing is what makes the sort of stuff and magic happen. Mm -hmm. So data reuse, data access to the data. Here, I'm talking mostly right now within the government, right? So in our case, we don't just allow for data to be reused. We actually mandate this. That was the once only really mm. principle mm. that we brought in early, saying that, look, yes, if government already knows something about you, even if it's another agency, the other should not be asking again. And that was really to enforce a better user experience that people would be, have to spend less time in different online environments and getting the stuff done that, uh, when they need to get them done. Now, the point here is that the funny thing, to us it's a funny thing, it's actually sad is that it all stops at the borders. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the reason I have the Finnish flag here is that, say, in our case, uh, Estonia and Finland, they're separated by 50 miles, 80 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Two very digitally advanced governments, I would mm -hmm. say, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go from one country to another to do business or to live or whatever, there's so much immediately you have to resort back to paperwork and the hassle that it brings. Mm -hmm. So to give you even the simplest, to me, one of the simplest examples, if an Estonian company, uh, goes to do any business sort of in, in Finland, it has to come across a tax agency there. Automatically, you have to have a paper, you know, signed somehow, printed, not mm -hmm. if, if not even notarized, that yes, I can represent this company. I'm in the board, for example, of my own company. To get that, you have to see an agency physically, which you otherwise never do, get the paper sort of basically mm -hmm. printed from a digital registry, then you do the vision work and take the ferry or the fly and go to Finland, you see the tax agency there, and what do they do? They type it up or scan it in. It's crazy, yeah. Our world, our single market. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that's, you know, again, to the, say, Estonia and Finland, it's even, you know, if you look at whatever countries in combination, it's the same way. So for us, it's clearly, let's connect the data together. I mean, as we have seen so, so strong domestically, what data sharing would allow, then exactly, it's, you know, for us, it's a clear message. Let's bring this to cross-border level. And uh, Finland is no random example. With Finland, we're doing this actively already in practice, right? So we are connecting our governments of data sharing platforms. So that literally, these days, technologically, to share data between an Estonian and a Finnish, uh, let's say, any database, a governmental database, is the same as doing it domestically. But of course, it, it, it should not end with this. We're just basically prototyping and, and, mm -hmm. and trialing this for the rest of Europe. And we see that that should be there really for the whole of single market. Because like, Previous speaker said, I mean, yeah, we also see it from practice that unless we bring the data together, unless we allow the data to sort of be accessed and reused and flow, the mm -hmm. single market, the other freedoms don't necessarily function, or at least there are very strong barriers in the way. So the example I had with the entrepreneur going to another country, well, that's actually the freedom of, you know, uh, movement for goods or services or capital. If it's so much trouble to basically, you know, to, to deal with another tax agency, it is a practical barrier. So that sort of instinct of the data movement and the, what you know, the benefits that sharing can bring, I mean, we've been preaching this and sort of trying to act on this already before the presidency, but of course we now bring this to European and uh, Union presidency as well with, uh, with us. And, um, but of course it's not just that. So if I look at uh, the presidency work we do now, and sort of then I would categorize our work really in sort of three buckets or three sort of uh, blocks. The first one, is really uh, that we have made a commitment together with our trio partners, so the uh, next uh, presidencies to come, Bulgaria and Austria, mm. that we will deliver deals and agreements between member states on all the digital single market files that we have on the table or are still coming you know, in the sort of uh, foreseeable future and by the end of the next year, so exactly by the time of the co commission term ending. For us as Estonia now, the co the, some of the priorities in the remaining four months are around, uh, for example, electronic communications code, making sure that there's a sort of, you know, right sort of uh, framework in place for uh, Europe to move forward in sort of telecom infrastructure and the investment to be there in the market. For example, that we could have 5G that was, that was mentioned here. Um, we already hope, exactly with the kind help of Irish as well, that, uh, to, to have the 
at least from member states' side, a bit of agreement already in October so forth, mm -hmm. that we could then go ahead with the European Parliament on this. Um, and many other pieces of legislation like that. It's just one example that I'm bringing out. But the core idea is really that you know, we'll deliver which, as much as we can on the legislative part, because that's really the core of, of making it a sort of framework mm -hmm. for a single market to happen. Um, on that one, uh, second part, is really the work we are trying to do then to really raise the profile of digital topics and discussions uh, throughout different policy fields in Europe. So one thing is to lay the building blocks, whether for your know, legal framework or the infrastructure, but the other part is that, you know, what do we use it for? And we should be using them more. So that's why we are having some 50 plus events throughout the presidency, most in Thailand, uh, basically dragging all the Irish ministers there, hopefully uh, in the six <laughs> months and others. Uh, trying to raise the topic, okay, so how can we really benefit more from digital in agriculture or space or energy or tourism or you name this, whatever field or policy there is. So that's really exactly trying to get the attention and, and the thinking going, okay, how do we now benefit from the digital single market that we are building up? How do we really benefit in different policy areas and build a better Europe with, with digital tools and, and solutions? The utmost discussion on that of course will be 29th of September in Thailand when we have a digital summit for the heads of state and government and exactly <coughs> trying to exactly talk big picture about you know, what is the European way forward in digital, uh, digital economy. And that's really the third block uh, is that so as we try to mainstream and sort of horizontally bring digital to any discussions we also try to start talking about now, okay, what's next really for the digital single market strategy as well? Beyond the files, the first block that we, we already have at the table, what should perhaps be coming with the next commission and, and parliament and so forth? Mm -hmm. And for us, the core area uh, in that regard is still anything and everything around free movement of data. How do we get more of that going? Some blocks, if we think about free movement of data, we've divided into, let's say, three blocks of things that we see that we definitely need to have some progress on. One is the, uh, how to get the unjustified data localization requirements removed. Johan mentioned the Commission is bringing out an initiative on this already in a, in a few weeks' time. So that will handle legislatively already soon. But beyond that, yes, definitely the issues of non-personal data. How do we get that access to that and reuse of that going is an, is an area where we see we have to start discussion. What could be the measures to do? Or secondly, um, I already brought out how we see that you know, unless we connect the governments, effectively a single market may not be working, then again, how do we do that? Uh, how do we, for, could we, for example, have a once-only principle on European level, at least as a sort of opt-in version that if I come to do business in Ireland, I could demand the government here that I don't want to give you my data again, ask the Estonians. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and could that perhaps push then <coughs> us to integrate and effectively then bring the sort of uh, the single market together digitally as well? On that one, uh, already early October, we are bringing the e-government, digital government ministers to Thailand to hopefully agree a declaration that would exactly uh, gr uh, set the next uh, steps in this uh, area. So this is the sort of things we do, exactly the legislative work we do in Brussels and with all our colleagues uh, daily now, the sort of uh, topics and discussions we're trying to bring to different policy areas as well as then with a longer term horizon in mind. And all really for the purpose because we've seen Estonia, the great benefits that digital life and society can bring. We see that let's not miss, on the, let's not miss out on this in the whole of Europe. So with that, thank you. And thank if you, you haven't been to Estonia, come visit us. <laughs>